Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Selamat tengah hari kepada Isha. So, khabar? Uh, I hope I hope that you are doing well. Okay. And I hope that you can focus on your study for this semester and wish you all the best. Okay. All right. For PST 662, today's lecture um we will cover chapter 2 which is the material considerations in product designs. So, okay. Our first slide. All right. Uh, so for the introduction, first we are trying to cover what is the influence of each mechanical properties with respect to the performance and with respect to the costs involved in the preparation of the material of the product design. So uh, the design that uh, we produce, which can be recycled. And also, we will consider the, the thermoplastic, thermoset material, thermoplastic elastomer material, and so on. So, as a for introduction, okay, the competitive market pricing from the increase in product consumption makes product designers consider more about the material than before. So, existing material selection sources can serve as useful function in giving up to date information on technical characteristic of the material all right in the in the selection of the material we need to consider whether the material is uh, thermoplastic the more the more um the more set whether it is the crystalline amorphous and so on okay for uh, selection of the crystalline and amorphous, for example, a crystalline polymer such as uh, POM, uh, PE, PP, nylon, PTFE, we have PET, PBT, right? So for amorphous, we have uh, polystyrene, PVC, polycarbonate. Okay, so you need to know the properties of this between these two uh, to um terms okay for crystalline uh, basically polymer that have a crystalline structure they will have an excellent chemical resistance and it is translucent or opaque and uh, we can uh, make this crystalline material become transparent with the chemical addition okay so the the most important thing for crystalline polymer they have high strength and also uh, softening point right so as compared to crystalline polymer the amorphous polymer they have no crystalline structure and they definitely has no pattern of molecules and no uh, sharp melting point right so the amorphous material basically they have uh, the glass uh, and transparent properties okay so uh, during processing basically all plastic normally in amorphous state with no definite order of the molecules okay so thermoplastic basically they uh, normally crystallize okay need to be quenched mean that uh, they not melt okay uh, not melt uh, it's slowly need to be cold to solidify okay so uh, for amorphous, it contains about the 20, uh, 20 for the okay, sorry, for crystalline region, they compose about the 80% of crystalline while they have they have uh, 20 percent of amorphous region because there is no 100% uh, crystalline polymer so we call it as the semi crystalline polymer so semi crystalline polymer composed of 20% of amorphous state which is uh, we call it as thermoplastic semi crystalline okay so 100% crystalline polymer um are not commercially produced okay so if you want to produce the 100% crystalline polymer we need to uh, by using the chemical addition right Okay, proceed with the next slide. Some uh, factor effective in material selection. Okay, the selection of a material for a specific application is a uh, through lengthy and expensive force. Expensive uh, process. 
So uh, the final selection is a compromise that brings some advantages as well as the disadvantages. So the factors that affect the material selection are grouped under various subtitles which can be followed in table 1, right? Okay, this is a table that review of different sources defining the effect, effective material aspect for material selection process. Okay, so as um, stated by the materials in 1967, they state that uh, the influence of the material will uh, have a big impact on the cost of the production and also the mechanical properties of the product produced. So according to the pattern, the pattern is the uh, person's name. Okay, and on 1968, okay, material selection will give the impact of the service requirement, fabrication requirement and also the economic requirement. Okay, so according to um, essence, since 1980, uh, material selection uh, will affect the production requirement, depend on the economic requirement and also the maintenance, right? So, all the selection of material are important for several attributes according to each studies and the latest one is by Ashby. They state that, Ashby state that um, general properties, mechanical properties, thermal properties, electrical properties, optical properties, eco properties, and also environmental resistance are, um, will be affected by the, will be uh, affected by the material selection. Okay, so it means that the material selection is very important, very crucial method when you want to design a product okay you have you need to to choose the right material for certain application okay so what factors are important for proper plastic selection all right factors that first uh, very important for plastic selection is the operating temperature okay um so we have a uh, plastic Plastic exhibit uh, two properties that can occur over long-term loading, right? So we have creep and stress relaxation. Okay, so the operating temperature whether uh, stay away from melting temperature or glass transition, glass transition temperature all over the map, right? So we will uh, look at the creep and stress relaxation after this, okay? Next is the mechanical stress, okay. Um, what types of the ultimate strength and stress structure uh, that will influence the plastic, right? And the next one is the creep, okay. What is creep? Okay, creep is the time dependent, which is increase in strain in material occurring under stress, okay. So, for example, if you um, you want to test the plastic material that um, enable to operate and um, able to operate or can um, can be strained, okay, creep at room temperature, we call it as a cool flow. So it is actually the change in dimension, okay, of a plastic under given stress and temperature over a period of time for example you do your you're doing a creep test for you to to check uh, how much the dimension or the elongation of the plastic under given stress and temperature over period of time that you have estimate right while for the stress relaxation uh, if plastic part is subjected to constant strain over time, so the amount of stress necessary to maintain the constant elongation will reduce. Okay, so actually the creep and stress relaxation is the plastic um, properties that will exhibit if you test it under long term loading. Alright, 
So uh, for stress relaxation, it will gradually decrease in the stress level with time under a constant deformation or strain. Okay. So means that for stress relaxation, you constant the uh, elongation, elongation or deformation of the plastic. Okay. For creep, you you constant uh, the the strain. Okay. The stress at the point stress at the point strain of the load. Right, for stiffness or the modulus, okay, as we know, the stiffness is the resistance of plastic part to deflection um, at, def at a, uh, applied forces, right? So, uh, next, fracture toughness, okay, fracture toughness is the quantitative way of expressing a material resistance to uh, to brittle fracture when crack is present right so when material uh, show a, uh, a crack so fracture toughness is uh, we used to check whether a material can resist the brittle fracture key impact key impact test is uh, that the load uh, heavy load is applied on the material plastic material okay for environmental exposure in environmental exposure means that the plastic can um can withstand at high at high weathering okay high temperature raining and so on for dimensional stability whether the plastic can maintain the shape or the dimension uh it is is it um will affect the dimension if it is it is exposed to uh, environment okay so all these are considered when designing a plastic next is the fatigue test which is repeated repeated loading okay test on crack behavior which a uh, long period of cyclic loading and the last one is the flammability okay or the burning test of the plastic Okay, we have another another factors which are where uh, chemical exposure, cosmetic, aging, the product design, and we also have the secondary factors which are thermal conductivity of the material, uh, electrical conductivity, transparency. Surface finish manufacture and also the manufacturing process. So why is designing with plastic more complicated than metal? First, because plastic has highly nonlinear material. Okay, they exhibit uh, the stress strain curve. Okay, and it also sensitive to temperature, frequency, strain, aging, and etc. Plastic also show an isotrophic, which is not good. Okay, and they also have so many players, trade name, lack of published data, too many material to choose from, too many properties to worry about, and also the impact of design and manufacturing method. Okay, look at the plastic versus metal properties. First, Higher thermal expansion, which is nearly 10 times that of the steel. Okay, plastic also have unfair polymer, which is 30 times less stiff. Plastic also fill polymers. For example, we have 40% nylon for two, five times less stiff. More flammable, degrade more readily with aging. Electrical and thermal insulators, plastic is much softer. And it cannot be shaped by co forming process. And we also have um, required tolerance greater than metal, warping issue, right? The creep, and also aging issue to deal with. And we can see this is the properties of composite, polymers, metal, and so on. 
the comparison based on the strength and also the young modulus okay you can see that the 